So we have our backgrounds, grounds and floors and our camera in the game, camera is moving and whatnot. What we need to do now is add our player. So here I am gonna go in our sprites, take the players file and I'm gonna change it here in the inspector from sprite mode single to multiple and uncheck generate map maps override here. I'm gonna say true color for the best quality and hit apply. And I'm gonna go here in our sprite editor and I'm gonna slice everything up. So slice things up, brothers! And I'm gonna hit apply. We only need this image from this image. So we don't need the idol and the jump one. We do not need it. So what I'm gonna do before I create the animation, I'm gonna create a folder called animations. So animations, just so that I can store it here. And we need image. So let me just go here. So we don't need image seven, we need only images from one up to six. So from player one up to player six, this is what we are gonna select. So player one up to player six, as you can see here, highlighted everything. So select them and put them in the scene and bam, we are creating player's animation. So here I'm gonna say player walk. So player walk and hit enter to save it. Now here I am gonna change player's name in the hierarchy panel and we don't see him. That is because he's on the default layer. We need to set him on player layer, which is here and position him at zero, zero. And I'm gonna change his scale at 0 0.7, 0 0.7 for the X and for the Y. Let me see how that looks like. Yeah, 0 0.7 is great. If we were to run the game now, we are gonna see our player here, but yeah, <laughs> let me just turn off the script for the camera. So we see the player, he's not moving, he's only being animated. That is, well, because we did not add anything regarding physics to our player. So we need to select the player and add component box 2D. So box collider 2D. I'm gonna go here inside, zoom a little bit and just resize the box collider. So let's say something like this and you can resize it here in the settings for the box collider in the inspector panel, notice here where I'm pointing with my mouse and maybe I'm gonna resize the Y just a little bit, something like this and just a little bit position Y downwards, like this, we're good to go. We are good to go. So you can take a look at these settings. It's gonna be 0.03. So offset for the Y it's negative 0.03, size for the X 0.72 and for the Y 2.11. We do need to add a rigid body to the player, so rigid body 2D, and now we are good to go. If I set the player on the player layer, so which is important, so we need to set the player on the player layer here because we have declared, well, with which can player collide and whatnot, which objects or layers. If I run the game now, notice what happens. Bam, player is gone and you're like, whoa. What is going on? Well, the problem is that all of our grounds and floors are triggers. Notice their box collider is set to be a trigger. Triggers, even though they detect collision, they pass through each other. They're not solid bodies. So when one object is a trigger, when another object touches it, it's gonna pass through it because it's not solid. In order to be solid, we need to make it not a trigger. So if we select all of our grounds and floors and we set them not to be trigger, our player is gonna be able to land on them. So now the player is able to land on the ground and the background, or excuse me, on the ground and the floor because they're not triggers anymore. So we just need to select them and make them not be triggers. And that is that. So now in our scripts folder, here I am gonna create a new C-sharp script called Playa Move or Player Movement. And I'm gonna attach it on the player. So attach it, double click it so Mono Develop will open it. And what we need to do here? Well, there are a couple of things that we are gonna do. First things first, you're gonna make the player move. And we're gonna do the same thing as with our camera. So we can just copy all of this right here. So you can simply copy it and go in our player function or class here and just paste it and this is gonna work like a charm. So if I go back in Unity and run our game, oh, excuse me, we do need to activate our camera script again. So here I'm gonna activate it. And by the way, I'm just checking and unchecking this checkbox, which will make this, well, active or not active. 
So when I run the game now, we're going to see that our player is moving along with the camera, which is what we wanted to achieve. Well, what we want to do now is we want to change the gravity on the player. In order to do that, we do need to add a game object. So under game object UI, and it's going to be a button. So BTN. And now we have our canvas. We are going to change some things for our canvas. So here, selecting the canvas in the inspector panel, here for the canvas, we are going to set it for the render mode from screen space overlay to screen space camera. And now we are going to attach the main camera, which is this one right here. We are going to set the sorting layer to canvas so that we can see our button and set scale with screen size to 1280 by 720 and we are good to go. And now I am going to take my button remove the text from it and I'm going to re rename it to jump. So simply jump and select it. Select this tool, this cube here, which is the last tool here. So here where I'm pointing with my mouse, notice the mouse has resized here, this cube tool, and I'm going to resize the button. So here and here, like half of the screen is going to be our button. So this half, the, the bottom half of the screen is going to be our button. And we are going to select the button and go under its color here. So image, we have in the inspector panel, image, color, and set the alpha to zero so that it will be invisible. In other words, transparent. And now we are going to go back in our player class. So we need a couple of variables here. But first, we are going to type here using Unity UI. And now I'm going to create a private button, which is going to be so button jump btn. And we also need a private rigid body 2d my body. And we're going to create our awake function. So void awake, not a will awake. And here is where we are going to add some things. First, we are going to get a reference to our rigid body. So we can do that here. So we can say my body is equal to get component component where is auto correct or auto finish get component rigid body 2d this will simply get the rigid body that is attached on the player it will get that component and now we are going to get the jump button so i'm going to say jump btn is equal to game object find me the game object with the name jump because if we go here we have named the button jump. So this is that game object and we want to get it and we want to say dot get component, the button component. So button script. What we are, what am I typing, man? It's button like this. So get me the button component and you might be surprised. We already did this before, but a button is actually a component attached on a game object. This game object by itself is not a button, but it has this button script on it. If I were to remove this component, it will, it will not be a button anymore. So yeah, the button is a component. So give me the button component and now I'm going to attach a function as a listener to that button. But first we need to create that function. We are going to create it here. So I'm going to type public void jump. And what we're going to do inside of our jump function? Well, we want to change the gravity of our player. So we want to make our player go upwards. How can we do that? Well, notice here, if I go in the Unity editor, run our game, and I take the player, select him. Notice we have the rigid body and we have the gravity scale. If I set the gravity scale to, let's say, negative one, bam, the player is up. If I put it back to one, player is down, negative one again, and bam, player is up. So what we are going to do here, first, I'm going to select the player and gravity scale, I'm going to set it at two. So we can set the gravity scale at two, which means it will affect two times the gravity on the player. So negative nine point, it will be not negative 9.8, but negative, that's how, 19.6, I think. Yeah. Anyways, we are going to set it at two. And now we are going to go back here in our jump function. And what we are going to do here is we are going to take my body, that gravity scale, and we are going to multiply it. So multiply it equal to negative one. What that means? Well, it means that we are going to multiply it by negative one. So let's say if the gravity is, for example, negative 18, when we multiply it, so multiply it by negative one, 
it's gonna be equal to 18. Next time we multiply 18, so 18 multiplied by negative 1, negative 1 is gonna be equal to, well, negative 18. That means that we are gonna change our gravity from affecting us to go down, then it will affect us to go up, so on and so forth. And now that we have our, well, gravity checked, so we are gonna, well, multiply it here. So if I go back, notice what is gonna happen now. So if I run the game, or excuse me, first things first, we need to go here, and I need to take jump vtn dot on click dot add listener, and this is the syntax for adding the listener. Open close parenthesis, then equals to and greater than sign and the name of the function, which is jump. So this is right here, this is the syntax. It's not jump button, it's jump function, man. So yeah, this is the syntax. Open parenthesis, close parenthesis, equal greater to, and then jump function. So now, if I go here, notice what is gonna happen. When I run the game, if we click here, our player is going up, but he is not changing his scale. So we need to change his scale in order to make him appear downwards. And that is pretty easy to do. So we can simply go here in our function. We can say vector three temp is equal to transform that local scale. Now, before anybody comes here and telling me, okay, you said that vector three represents X, Y, and Z. What is going on? You're using it for the scale. Well, if we go back here, select the player or any game object, the scale on top, notice scale is represented by X, Y, and Z. So again, a vector tree is X, Y, and Z. So we can take the scale and we can take temp dot, so temp dot Y, and we can multiply that, so multiply equal to by negative one, which will have the same effect as we described here. And now we can simply say transform that local scale local scale is equal to temp, which will, again, this right here has the same explanation as this right here. So we are simply going to multiply it by negative one over and over again. Currently, it's 0 0.7. When we multiply it by negative one, it's going to be negative 0 0.7. Next time we multiply it by negative one, it's going to be how much? Negative 0 0.7 multiplied by negative one, it's 0 0.7. So simple as that. Going back in Unity, hitting the play button. If I tap on the button now, bam, the player is changing his scale and he's going downwards and we can flow with the player up and down. And yeah, this is how it goes. And you can play with the gravity. You can play with the rigid body. If I select the player, you can go here in the rigid body. You can play with the mass, linear drag, angular drag, gravity scale and whatnot, just so that you can, well, fix or maybe make it more realistic. I'm satisfied with this one. We are gonna do one more thing. So notice here, if I do this over and over again, it could happen that our player will rotate. I'm not sure, but for that, we are gonna freeze the Z rotation. So freeze the Z rotation on the player so that we prevent any rotations that we don't want, which can, can happen or can or will not happen. So I'm not sure, but it can happen anyways. So we are good to go. This was it for this video, adding the player, making him move upwards and downwards and whatnot. The next thing that we need to do is add our collectible items. And yeah, then we are good to go and our game is finished. So until next video, guys, I will see you then. Take care.